You've definitely seen the night sky, and you've probably noticed the countless amount of stars and planets visible. But what you're seeing, and all the stars, galaxies, and planets that astronomers can detect, are just 4% of the universe. We don't really have any idea behind what exists in the other 96%, which makes it increasingly hard to answer questions such as what the shape of our universe is. However, there are many theories as to what the shape of our universe could be and how geometry would work in each of them. So let's take a look at three of these specific theories. The first possibility is that our universe is a flat shape and follows the rules of flat geometry or Euclidean geometry. This is the regular geometry that we're familiar with. The angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and so on. But it doesn't always have to be. Whenever a fact such as the angles of a triangle sum to 180 degrees isn't true, we're dealing with non-Euclidean geometry. Now you might not see how the angles of a triangle could add up to something other than 180 degrees, but it's actually pretty common. For example, let's take a curved surface, such as the surface of the Earth. If we started at the North Pole, walked south 100 miles, turned west, walked 100 miles again, and finally turned north again and walked 100 miles, we would be back at the North Pole. We took three 90 degree turns, yet we've completed a triangle. The angles of this triangle adds up to 270 degrees. Of course, this is because the triangle is on a curved surface, and Euclidean geometry doesn't work there. So we can see that a triangle's angles only add up to 180 degrees on a flat surface. So this is a straightforward way to test the universe's shape. In fact, this is what scientists do. Measure huge triangles made by three points in space and measure the angles. If they add up to close to 180, we know that the universe is flat, or very close to f flat. One example of flat space is just our picture of it, ordinary infinite space. But this isn't the only possibility. This donut-like shape shown here is called a torus. This is another flat shape. You might wonder how this is flat, because it's obviously curved, right? Well, yes, turns out we can't physically make a torus in 3D space. But if you were two-dimensional, this torus would feel flat to you, and also very different. That's because there are three kinds of paths that, if two-dimensional you follows, you would loop back to where you started. Of course, these loops would feel like a straight line to 2D you. Since light would also loop back around on these paths, it means you would be able to see infinitely many copies of yourself by looking in these directions. We can reason abstractly to see that if it was a 3D torus, you could see infinitely many copies of yourself in three dimensions. So if we see copies of ourselves in space, we can gather evidence that our universe is shaped like this. Obviously we don't, so if we do live in a universe like this, it's probably so large that our copies are beyond the observable universe. A second possibility is that our universe is spherical, or more specifically, a three-dimensional sphere. We know about two-dimensional spheres, like a ball or the surface of the Earth, which are all points equidistant from a center point in 3D space. Similarly, a 3D sphere is all the points equidistant from a center point in 4D space. However, it's hard to visualize. As shown previously by the triangles on the surface of the Earth example, if the universe was spherical or had positive curvature, it would mean that the angles of a triangle in this universe would add up to more than 180 degrees. Interestingly, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle in spherical geometry is greater than pi. Here there are no parallel lines. All parallel lines eventually converge, which goes against our entire definition of parallel. If the universe was like this, it means that light would always travel on the shortest paths, which are the great circles. This means that light will always loop back to you because it travels in great circles, like the torus. However, since you're 2D, everything will feel like a straight line, 
A very interesting phenomenon that occurs when the universe is spherical is how the horizon appears to an observer. The object at the point of the sphere opposite where you're standing will appear as the entire background in the horizon. This is because the point opposite from you on the sphere will be equidistant from you in all directions. Hence light from the object loops back to you from all directions filling your entire visual horizon. If there's nothing at the point opposite to you, you'll see yourself as the entire horizon because light that left you will loop all the way around the sphere back to you. Now it might be reasonable to say that we don't live in a spherical universe because nobody sees themselves as the entire background and horizon, but it is feasible. This is because the observable universe might not be large enough for us to see the backdrop. That brings us to our last possible shape, the hyperbolic universe. This is essentially the opposite of a spherical universe, or one with positive curvature. A hyperbolic universe is one with a negative curvature shape, like a horse saddle. For reasons similar to why we can't build a torus in 3D space, we can't make a hyperbolic plane in Euclidean space either. However, we can view a distorted version of it in this special disk. All the triangles at the boundary of the disk seem to be getting smaller. But this is because we're viewing a distorted version of it. If we look from the perspective of hyperbolic geometry, all the triangles are actually the same size. Also, there's no real edge to this disk. It's infinite because smaller triangles at the boundary would just keep piling up exponentially and we would reach no end. The curved lines on the disk are in reality straight lines. They look curved because we're trying to model negative curvature on a flat disk. Triangles would also sum to less than 180 degrees because of the negative curvature. Similarly, in circles, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter is less than pi. Even parallel lines eventually diverge. Now let's look at how an observer would see things in a hyperbolic universe. Let's say you were observing your friend traveling away from you. In Euclidean space, they'll start to get smaller and smaller as they move away from you but not very rapidly. In hyperbolic space, however, your friend will start getting smaller at an exponential rate, similar to the triangles that get exponentially smaller at the boundary. Now that we've seen how geometry would work in each universe, which one is the actual shape? Well, scientists have performed many curvature measurements and measured many cosmic triangles formed by points in space and their results favor the flat universe, or at least a universe that's very close to flat. But that doesn't mean we can eliminate the other theories, because our universe could be either of those two, and be extremely large, so curvature might be too tiny for us to detect. It's the same reason why ancient people thought the Earth was flat, the curvature of it was too tiny to detect for them. So that brings us to the end three different possibilities, but we don't have the equipment to determine the correct one. I guess we'll just have to leave it to the future to figure out which one.